Sunday, May 24th, 1981. We're at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in Indianapolis, Indiana. Gentlemen, start your engines. Well, there it is. The cry that has been given in recent years by the widow of Tony Homan, but Mary Homan and A.J. Foyt. In fact, right now, why don't we meet some of the contenders on this starting grid? In the first row will be Bobby Unser, winner of the pole position, Mike Mosley, and A.J. Foyt. The and they're racing in Indianapolis into the first turn. Bobby Unser. A.J. Foyt has dropped back a little bit. Gordy Johncock has moved up with Mike Mosley. Johnny Relevant's taking second position. A.J. Foyt's more on the right-hand side of your screen there, but it's at this point we sure hope so your guys are going to win well that's what it takes you have to go all the way okay good luck to you thank you Bruce. and now they work their way through lap traffic through turn three and head for turn four mike mosley in car number 48 is currently running second tom stephen car number two is the leader johnny rutherford view uh, the green flag already beginning to fly now as he accelerates. You can see how fast the front row pulled away. That yellow car is Johnny Rutherford, and Sneva is right down in front of him. Directly in front is Pancho Carter. And he pulled the low line, allowing some of the traffic up high going into the first turn. I'm absolutely amazed at these pictures. Remember, the camera is just about four inches off the ground, right down in the nose. Now, here comes Mike Mosley by. Look what a tremendous job of driving he did. And look, too, how close they are. Mosley kicking up some dusties down so low. Also decides to drop in behind him. What kind of speeds were they doing early in the race here? Well, they were probably picking up to uh, about 195 miles an hour at this point because they're really coming up to full speed as they come across the line now. Tremendous little camera. Just an incredible job. The total package weighs only 10 and a half pounds. The camera itself is only a pound and a half. And Arnie Reef and Bob McKeeran and our technical people Fred Hamelfarb, Chuck Reisner, Tony Dia, Bob Decker, Phil DeFeo have worked constantly. We started in the 12th position. That's outside in row four. Really charged in the first part of the race, Paul. Well, mostly stock block engines should pay off in torque, the ability to accelerate. Here is Mosley starting in 12th position. And as you can see, the torque working very well as he moves around Bill Alsop's car and really begins to fly. And he was able to move up in this first lap substantially. Look at the traffic and watch the fine job of driving that Mosley does as he darts down to the inside and is looking for just the right hole right behind Pancho Carter there. He falls in. A.J. Foyt is sitting up there, and it's just a tremendous job as he keeps that car very low, picks up another couple of positions, and drops in behind A.J. Foyt. So Mosley, who is exceedingly good in traffic, and there you see it in the first lap of the race. He started 12, and in the first, uh, first lap was able to pick up at least four positions. Mike Mosley at age 34, a total of five championship car wins, including one this year at Milwaukee in car number 48 and this is his 
15th year of driving championship cars, so that means that he started at age 19. So he uh, joins that category of Pauls of the Young Titans. Down here alongside the Pepsi Challenger and Mike Mosley, who has just now buckled back in. Mike, any problems at all with this long delay in your mind in getting back now into the real racer syndrome? No, I don't think I'll have much problem, no. Obviously, you have made great strides in this past week. You qualified at one speed. The next day, you gained a couple of miles per hour in practice. You gained more in yesterday's practice session. What has happened with this team to see this dramatic gain in speed? Well, as you probably know, it, this car is basically pretty new, and we keep learning every time we run it. And we try to make a lot of changes, and we've just the car has come good for us. It's got to be a tremendously exhilarating feeling for you to know that you're making that progress and up until the red flag challenging for a lead. Uh, most definitely. It's nice to be competitive. He has the door closed on it. Mosley comes underneath, uses the lap traffic, and he takes the lead. Mike Mosley takes the lead. So Mike Mosley just splits up and goes around, and Tom Sneva has to drop in behind. I wonder if what Johnny... And Tom Sneva continues to run second. Mike Mosley's car has been running very well. We've talked a lot about its engine, but I think we also have to talk about this new Eagle chassis with the smaller rear wing. I think that that chassis is adding to his ability to race here because he's driving the car anywhere he wants to, high or low on the banking. So the combination of engine, the car, and certainly Mike Mosley are paying off for Dan Gurney and his team here today. But let's go back to the strength of that particular engine. The strength is power in the turns. Is that correct? Well, it is on most racetracks. The fact that it has more torque, more ability to accelerate. But on a high bank like this, several of the drivers told me that they are only wavering about 200 RPMs between their fastest and their slowest engine speed. And my choice might be Bradley. And Larry Newber in the pit area. Let's get your prediction before we go green. Bob, I'll tell you, I know the bold thing to do would be to pick somebody other than Brabham, but I just can't. The car is perfectly designed for this racetrack. Jeff Brabham is uh, an experienced road racer. He's red hot right now, and everything is in the favor of the Eagle crew. Now, I want to make one other comment. There's a guy back in ninth position, Mike Chandler, who's got to be considered a dark horse. Remember, he's a graduate of the Super B ranks. He knows this type of racing very well. He's got a lot to race for today. The company for which his dad works, the Los Angeles Times, sponsoring the race. So let's watch Watch Chandler, but Jeff is going to be tough. Well, Roger, we mentioned the fact that this car, the full sitter, is powered by a stock block Chevrolet engine. Most of the other cars are turbocharged. Now, what factor will the turbocharger play in uh, this race? Naturally, when uh, you step on the throttle of a turbocharged race car, when you slow down, there's a little bit of a lag. Will that present a problem? Well, it presents a problem in those areas where there's a, a, a real slow turn but it should work to his advantage or to the driver's advantage down the long back straightaway. And it could even out a little bit. Brabham's car, on the other hand, because it's not turbocharged, he can accelerate more positively off of those short turns. So that's where he'll have his advantage. They're professionals, and right now, it's all business. All right. Al Unser and Jeff Brabham are nearly side by side as they're in the middle of turn number nine. They are a few feet away from hopefully the start of this race. The safety car pulls off of the racetrack. The other members of the field bunches up. We hope for a safe California 500. Here they are off of turn nine, and the green is out, and the race is on. Outside wall and look at Rutherford move up. He's running in fourth position. Johnny Rutherford, a bold move at the start. He took to the inside from his sixth starting position, moved up two, and now Rutherford runs in fourth. The leader, Jeff Wabham, as expected, as the cars move through the S's, snake like, but it appears that all the cars are running. Wabham a little bit high there going in to turn number six. Here he is off of six down the hill, leading to. Turn number seven, Jeff Brabham stretches out the lead just a little bit on Al Unser, who started alongside. Now, Jeff Brabham sets the car into turn number seven, the sharpest turn on the circuit. Out of seven, stepping on the accelerator once again, heading uphill to turn number eight. Brabham, as expected, has jumped off into the lead. Those numbers that you see there are for the driver's benefit, telling them exactly how far they are from the apex of the turn. Now, here they are in turn number eight. 
And as they come off of this particular corner, now they really stand on the throttle and look at Brabham build up speed as he goes down the back stretch. This is the point of the racetrack where the cars will be going the fastest of all, 190 miles an hour. It is Jeff Brabham leading with Alan for running second. Now they come within our view. As Bradham sets up for turn number nine, drives that car deep down into the turn. Allen's are running about 10 or 15 car lengths behind. Here they come off of turn number nine, completing lap number one. Jeff Bradham is your leader. Running second is Allen's that lead the California 500. He has led every lap so far, sat on the pole and jumped out into the lead at the drop of the green flag. Running behind him in second position continues to be Allen's, but it's a pretty good advantage for Jeff Bradham and we'll be getting the interval between Brabham and Unzer as they come by next time. Actually, Bob, I've been timing that uh, difference in uh, time, and uh, they've been averaging someplace between 8 and 10 seconds uh, variance. It seems like when they get in traffic, Brabham will lose a little, and then Al will get in trouble, and he will uh, lose a little. It's been going back and forth, but Brabham obviously able to lead the race almost at will and at whatever speed he wants. The race is on the trail. But as we saw two weeks ago in Milwaukee, well, it doesn't really mean that you're out of it if you have to start in the back. Mike Mosley came from last starting position, having no chance to qualify at Milwaukee, and he went on to win the race. Now, the story of that weekend for Mike Mosley ended with the race, but it was a long weekend up to that point. Mike Mosley's car was in two pieces on qualifying day at Milwaukee. Gary Lee talked to crew chief Dan Gurney. Uh, we're not exactly sure what the problem is. It could have been in the engine in the first place, but we thought it might have been in the plumbing system. In the meantime, we were running so well that we just didn't, we didn't want to believe that we had a problem until it really became a serious one. We now are only moments away from the beginning of the qualification station. How long will it actually take to install the new power plant? Uh, I would say a minimum of two hours from this point, and uh, that would be a record for us. So uh, we're going to do the best we can. Mike Mosley still trying to move up. He's now in 11th position, trying to get around Tom Lazier in 10th position. Mike Mosley to the inside, cannot get around, and Mosley drops back into 11th. He's battling with Bob Lazier. Now he gets around in turn number three. Mike Mosley to the inside, and he's now running in 10th position. He has moved up 16 spots in the first seven laps. Mosley spent the early laps moving through the slower traffic, but then began to battle with those who had started up front. Good wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing here between Gordon Johncock and Mike Mosley. Mosley to the inside. This is the battle for fourth position, and Mike Mosley gets around Gordon Johncock for fourth. Boy, I'll tell you, that Cooney Eagle is sticking down on the pancake part of the racetrack. Mosley passed there several times today. Mosley moves into position now, and we'll see if Mosley has enough strength to catch up with Kevin Colgan. Earlier in the race, and Colgan is right in front of him, and Mosley is going to work right away to try and prove himself again. Mike Mosley could go into third position here in just a few moments. He is about to go around, or at least trying to get around Kevin Colgan there in number 32, and Mosley stands on it, going into three and gets around. It's not supposed to be that easy, I'll tell you. I don't know if Kevin's on coming, Bob. What a story here this afternoon. Mike Mosley started 25th is running in third position now at the conclusion of 96 laps. It didn't take Mosley long to build up a 13-second lead, and he needed one more pit stop. A blown engine by Gordon Johncock was the yellow that Mike Mosley needed to enter the pit area. 139 is being completed. Gary Lee is near the Mike Mosley pit. Mike Mosley, they're checking the tires right now. There is no tire change. Fuel, this will be a fast one, and the Pepsi Challenger is underway. A quick stop for Mike Mosley. Wow. 6.4 seconds, 6.47 second pit stop for Mike Mosley, who is back out on the racetrack. As the white flag came out, Mike Mosley began lap number 150, and he drove that lap as flawlessly as the other 149. It was an unbelievable story for Mike Mosley at Milwaukee, from massive mechanical problems on the day before, to victory lane and the checkered flag the next day for the stock block engine prepared by Dan Gurney. As he took the checkered flag, the crowd rose to its feet to salute him. And he saluted back with a raised right hand.